Hey GED students, let's take a look at a type of problem that comes up a lot on the GED math test, which is writing algebraic equations. And we are going to look at some pretty simple examples at first. In later videos, I will cover some more complex examples. So let's look at this. It says, translate each sentence into an algebraic equation. So translate. Literally, like the way you translate Spanish to English, you can translate English to the language of algebra, um, mathematical symbols. And so it can be really, really simple. Like this first example is very simple. You know, I've never met a GED student yet who didn't know the algebraic symbol there for five. Of course, we write five. Uh, using our number five, right? And so again, most students know the symbol for minus. So five minus. Now where a lot of students get tripped up is when I say stuff like this in algebra class. Like really, Kate, a number M? An M is not a number. And guys, all I'm saying here is that M is some unknown number, some mystery number. And since I don't know what he is, let's use a letter to stand in for him. And they tell me which letter to use. They'd like me to use M. So there it is, 5 minus a number m. Now how about the word is? I'm doing direct translation right here, just word for word. And is is a really interesting word, because look what I'm saying here. I'm saying 5 minus a number m is 22. This is that. When I say that there mathematically, that this thing is that thing, I'm saying that the two things are the same. They are equivalent. So this is another way of saying equals. So five minus a number m is, well, it is what? Well, it's 22. And there you go. I've translated this into an algebraic equation. And a lot of you guys are like freaking out right now. I don't know how to solve this. I don't know what to do with this. All I asked you to do was do some translation. You're done, job over. Thank you for obeying the directions, we're done. Now, if I said translate and solve, that would be one thing. But all I said was just translate. So we're done there. Now, I do want to make you aware of one little trick in this video, even though we're kind of easing into the topic, and that is this idea of less than. A lot of students think less than means exactly the same as minus, and so they will translate this uh, equation, 5 less than a number m, is 22 exactly the same as number one, and you're wrong if you think that. So I need to talk to you a little bit about language with the phrase less than. So I want you to imagine that I had some money, like, I don't know how much money, $25, all right? My daughter, she's got less money than I do. Uh, let's say my daughter has $20 less than I do. Let me write that down. My daughter has $20 less than I do. Whoa, it would help if I knew how to spell. There we go. Now, less than I do, and we know that I have 25 bucks. Okay, so let's think about how you do this problem. If you wanted to figure out how much my daughter had, would you take the $20 less, and would you subtract my 25, or would you take my 25 and subtract the $20 less? Well, of course, you would take the 25 and subtract the $20 less. So it's this kind of weird thing that when you use the phrase less than, it kind of switches the order on us. Less than it means to subtract that number. So if I say five less than a number, I'm literally saying subtract five. So then the question is, what do I subtract five from? Okay, we'll keep reading. It says five less than a number M. The number M is what you're subtracting five from. Just like the $25 I had was what I was subtracting the 20 from. And so I'm going to start with that number M and then I'm going to subtract 5 from that. That's 5 less than a number M and then that is equal to 22. And be careful, even though these problems look really, really similar, 5 minus M is equal to 22 and M minus 5 is equal to 22, they are not the same. Okay, order matters in subtraction. I can't say that enough. Order matters in subtraction. Five minus M is not the same as M minus five. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.